Happy Easter. Good morning, everyone. It's great to have you with us. And I know that uh, we're in person and we're trying to be online as well. We'll see if all that works. We, um, instead of announcements earlier, we had those who shared Easter lilies with us in memory of or in honor of loved ones. So I'll go through a few of the announcements. For anniversaries, we're wishing Steve and Sheila Fries a happy anniversary on April 11th. On the 13th is Mark and Nancy Jungling, and on the 22nd, Danny and Maria Oltman. For birthdays today, we have Austin Furno, Jeff Van Deest, and Ryland Nelson. And then for April 5th, Millie Anderson. On the 6th, Mardine Van Deest, and on the 11th, Dustin Houston. So happy birthday, happy anniversary to those folks. We've been sharing with you over the last few weeks about Operation Threshold and some of their specific needs. And so that was in a newsletter, if um, you can be re refresh your thoughts on that. Canned vegetables, canned soups, um, diapers, sizes two to six, uh, macaroni and cheese, those kind of things. The office is closed, so if you just let them know that you're out front, they'll come out and, and get the items from you. And on the third Tuesday each month, we have the mobile food pantry. It's now at the community uh, center. And if you want more information, if you'd like to help, you can get a hold of Gail uh, for that. They are doing summer camp. We're excited to announce that. So the mailings have gone out to the families, and now we have those little brochures at the church if you're interested in that. No. Zoom fellowship after church today, but we will, we will be back on Wednesday from 4.30 to 5.30. And looking forward to gathering in church next Sunday to worship as well. Our website's up and going, and if you'd like to be able to give to Bethany, uh, one of you, the unique ways is to give right through your phone, your computer, your tablet. It's called Give Plus, and we can tell you more about that if you're interested. So Pam will be the voice of the people today. We do have the uh, words and the uh, music up on the slides. So if you'd like to participate quietly to yourself, um, you're welcome to do that as well. So friends, let us continue our worship service with our call to worship. The tomb is dark but empty. The one you are looking for has overcome the darkness. The stone has been rolled away. The one you are looking for has overcome death. The burial cloths are put aside. The one you are looking for is alive. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let us worship our risen Savior.
And now for the litany of confession. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. We anoint the death of our dreams, even before we allow them a chance to live. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. We give up on hope so easily, on the expectation that God will do something incredible. While, there, while they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. God speaks through the strangers we encounter, but we don't hear. We don't want to be challenged by a new word. Why do you look for the living among the dead? Jesus is not here, but has risen. We seek life from the death of the past. We hold to that which breathes only in our memory, to mistakes long past, to hurts long inflicted, to strings attached to forgiveness. Remember how Jesus told you while he was still with you in Galilee that the Son of Man, the human one, must be handed over to the sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Too often, torn and scattered, we feel unworthy of the healing of God's grace or the promise of restoration. Then they remembered Jesus' words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. We forget the promises of God, even those whispered just moments ago. We want proof before we'll believe, before we'll be faithful. Now, it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. We don't risk enough to trust the messengers in everyday appearance. We don't dare ourselves to understand. But these words seem to the apostles an idle tale, and they did not believe them. We think our problem's too big for God. We act like frightened disciples, unwilling to allow God into our crowded lives, unwilling to make room for the one who creates and creates again. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen clothes cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. We are like Peter. We deny God. We fail to share the miracle. We keep the good news to ourselves. Forgive us, God, for our disbelief, for seeing an empty tomb and thinking a cruel trick, for discover, discovering a discarded burial cloth yet still holding to death, for hearing words of life, but keeping them to ourselves. Restore us even in our unbelief. Amen. Thank you, Pam. So the Easter story, according to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses one through 12. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again? Then the woman remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But the apostles did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. This ends today's scripture passages. Our sermon today is now and forevermore. 
Once again, friends, happy Easter. It is so good to be together again, either in person like here or online later. Easter for the church is like the Super Bowl. It's a time in which we Christians are able to talk about the one significant claim, about Christianity's deepest truth, about its most profound mystery. It's more important today, maybe than any other time, to share this good news that Easter has for us. The good news, the Easter truth, that God has broken the ceiling, the glass ceiling of death, and has offered eternal life. Heaven is a reality for those who yoke their lives to Jesus. So friends, we're not talking about universal salvation, that common belief that all you have to do is be born and you're automatically in heaven. We're talking about a very specific faith that says that you have to connect yourself with Jesus Christ. Believe that Jesus is, um, died on the cross, was raised from the dead, and then begin patterning, imitating, living your life according to God's love, according to the way Jesus demonstrated those three years of ministry. And when all that happens, then those folks go to a place we call heaven, a place of eternal love and joy. Years ago, this, right after Easter service, the pastor was in the back greeting everyone, and this young man comes out, and he shakes the pastor's hand, and he says, you just, you just got to love everything about Easter, even if it's just a fairy tale. I think there are probably still folks that think Easter is just a fairy tale. They doubt the truth behind Easter. They may think Jesus is a great philosopher, some master teacher. Maybe they'll even give enough space that Jesus founded a new religion. But this idea about the resurrection to eternal life, it just feels like wishful thinking, they say. Here's a story you have heard me share before. Every year, this story says, thousands of people travel to the Italian Alps, and there's this path that they follow, the Stations of the Cross. And so as they wind their way around this mountaintop, they get to, they get to the crucifix. And one day, one tourist was sort of looking at the landscape, and something caught his eye, and so he kind of went around the bend just a little bit, away from where the crowd was. Well, there's a path. It wasn't, uh, um, it had been grown over, so he had to walk through the thicket, get through this. But guess what he found on the other side, just up a little further? One more shrine, the last station, the empty tomb. But everybody travels this journey to the cross and stops. And I think that's what we do so many times. We understand Good Friday. The pain, the brokenness, the suffering, the heartache, we get all of that. We live all of that. But Easter, that one more step around the bend to go through the rough stuff to get to new life, we don't get that at all. Or we get it in pieces for just a little bit, and then it just disappears. The Bible is talking about something different. It notes that what happened on that first Easter was utterly shocking. Disorientation, darkness, confusion, fear, uncertainty. Now those, those were the emotions of the moment. Today's text tells about women showing up at the tomb at daybreak, wondering on their journey, how are they going to move that massive stone? As they get closer, they look up and they see the stone is on edge, like a coin, it's been rolled away. I'm thinking of you today. I'm thinking about, even on this Easter morning, here in person with our masks and separated, all this feels so weird to us, not being able to sing and not be able to just let it go. Jim's back there struggling with our technology, trying to keep it all going. It's a mess. And I'm thinking of you this morning. And I'm thinking that each one of us has an immovable stone in our life that we wonder how will it be rolled away? How will we get to that place to live the life we feel deep inside we are meant to live? For some of us, 
that immovable stone could be a weakness. We know we have to take better care of ourselves, but we never really get around to it, do we? Or maybe it's a moral matter. We feel it, we think about it, we worry about it, but we don't stop doing it. Perhaps that stone I've been talking about is death of a loved one, or a troubling diagnosis, or something that happened in our past. But we have something that blocks us, prevents us from leading the kind of life God has intended for each one of us. Who will roll away that stone? These women show up ready to deal with death. In the picture you see their arms are full of spices that they prepared. And when they show up and they walk inside that tomb, what they find is nothing. Empty. And they're trying to sort through this mystery. And while they're sorting through that mystery, these two men dressed in dazzling white begin visiting with them. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Don't you remember Jesus' words? He told you all about this. Now, for us that's been in the book of Luke for a while, if we go back, you remember a time, maybe, oh, six, eight weeks ago, we were talking about a story and we said, well, one of these little catchphrases is, Jesus has set his face to go to Jerusalem. And then for like, I don't know, 10 chapters, it's called the narrative lection, the, the, um, the traveling lectionary. In Luke, he then has Jesus walking to Jerusalem, and all these parables that we've been talking about happen, teaching moments happen along the way. These two men tell these women who have been with Jesus this whole time, they didn't just pop up on the scene, they've been journeying with Jesus this whole time. In fact, many of the women have supported Jesus' ministry financially, along the way. They come to the tomb. We have a picture of three of them, but we know from our text today there's more. Don't you remember those words Jesus told you on the journey to Jerusalem? How the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners, be crucified, and that God would raise him from the dead? Oh, yeah, 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 that does ring a bell. There was something about that. The women begin remembering. Do they understand what's going on? Of course not. Do they remember? It's starting to make sense. There's something there. They show up and the tomb is empty. Jesus has been raised. There in the half light of the early morning, something incredible and completely unexpected had taken place. And that is the power of Easter. One theologian said that the good news of God has one word written on every page of the Bible. The word is nevertheless. In a world where evil and suffering occur, God says, nevertheless, because God can bring forth good from all evil, all sadness, all things bad. To prove it, I'm going to take us back from our scripture stories, I don't know, starting in August. I'm just going to pick bits and pieces, but you're going to start to see a pattern. Pharaoh and the Egyptians have oppressed the Hebrew people for hundreds of years, and God says, nevertheless, God raised Moses, who helped set the Hebrew people free. Mary was still a virgin, and God says, nevertheless, you will bear my son. His name will be Emmanuel. There's this man who is set next to the pool of Siloam for 20 years, but nobody puts him in the water to be healed. Jesus comes along, and even though this man has been at that pool for 20 years, crippled and unable to move on his own, Jesus says, nevertheless, Get up and walk. And that man stands up, takes a few steps, and is healed. There's this big crowd that keeps gathering to listen to Jesus. There's 5,000 or so. It's getting later in the day, and they are hungry. 
And all Jesus has five loaves of bread and a couple of fish. And yet, nevertheless, blesses them and feeds them. Everyone eats till they are full. Lazarus, dead in a tomb, corpse rotting, stinks. Remember that phrase? Nevertheless, Jesus cries out, Lazarus, get out here. And this dead man rose, walked out of the tomb, and lived. Just the other night, in our readings, Peter denies Jesus three times before the crucifixion. Nevertheless, Jesus forgave him, invited him to be a great leader of the church. Then comes Saul, we'll get there in a few weeks, then comes Saul, who persecutes and kills the Christians, and God says, nevertheless, and transforms Saul, gives him a brand new name, Paul, and makes him a wonderful theologian. It's happened throughout our history, this nevertheless, this way of thinking that life is going one way, but it doesn't have to always be that way. Our grandparents thought polio and measles would be there forever. Nevertheless, vaccines were discovered and now some of these diseases are virtually history. The Berlin Wall, the Soviet Union, seemed solid as stone. Nevertheless, they crumbled and fell. A teacher wrote that this particular student of hers wasn't very bright, that he never applied himself and had no future. Nevertheless, Winston Churchill grew up and went on to change the course of history. Perhaps you have some nevertheless moment in your life that you've had a stone blocking you from the kind of life you longed to live, and then the stone was moved. You thought your only choice was to get a divorce or live a lifeless marriage forever, but then your marriage turned around and began to flourish. Your 12-year-old was diagnosed with a tumor and you thought death was around the corner. But the stone was moved and now your son is 42 years old and practicing law. You can add your own story here, your own nevertheless moment, in which things looked dark and hopeless and the stone was moved away and you found life and light and love. Experts tell us that climate change threatens life on our planet. Nevertheless, God's followers are working to turn things around. Gun violence continues all over our country. Nevertheless, God's ambassadors are working to ensure that our streets will become safer. This has been in the news lately, hasn't it? George Floyd was killed in broad daylight. Nevertheless, God's servants are striving to bring about justice and equality. That gap between the rich and the poor, those who have and those who don't, keeps getting wider. It looks like there's no end in sight. Nevertheless, God's followers are working to bridge that gap. Christians are called to help roll away the stones and bring about God's nevertheless into the lives of those around us. Christians are called to help move other people's stones that they may find God and find life and purpose in eternity. The resurrection is an outrageous assault on our shrunken worldviews. So if God raised Jesus from the dead, if the tomb was empty, if the angel said, he's not here, If the disciples saw Jesus alive once again, then surely God can roll away whatever seems immovable in our lives. Which, by the way, means that no loss, no illness, no failure, no trouble, no terrible mistake will block our life forever. For God, the great transformer, can turn the nothingness of death into the victory of eternal life. story about a devout old fisherman who lived alone. 
when he was physically able, he'd walk 14 miles on Sunday to get to church. One particular Sunday, there's a terrible storm, and the old man arrives at church just as the pastor is saying the last three words of the benediction. Now and forevermore. And all of his friends gathered around him and said, oh, we're so sorry that you walked that difficult 14-mile walk and you must be disappointed. And he said, disappointed? It's worth walking 28 miles to hear those three words now and forevermore. God's answer to whatever threatens, jeopardizes, or ails us is to write, nevertheless, right over our lives, to move those immovable stones that are blocking us from the life God has called us to lead. Nevertheless, is written on every page of the Bible and into each chapter of our lives when we invite Jesus into our lives. Easter reminds us that evil never has the final word. The worst things are never the final things. The best is yet to be. So I invite you once again this day, in the half light of early morning, Jesus is stirring, reminding us that no matter what dead ends we face, there is reason to hope. Because life is changed, not ended. This is not just a one-time celebration that comes around every spring. Easter's truth remains true now and forevermore. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, you remind us this day that no matter what obstacles stand in our way, however heavy or large, you can roll that away and allow us to move forward into life that you've called us to lead. As you write, nevertheless, over each chapter of our life and transform our lives into an Easter reality now and forevermore. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare for the offering, again, I realize that you've given your offering at the back of the church, but I want you to think of these words. Let us give in order that the message of the empty tomb and the hope of eternal life can be proclaimed here, around Grundy Center, around the world. Let us pray. God of the wilderness, we give these offerings in gratitude, rejoicing in the abundance of your gifts to us. We give these offerings in faith, trusting that you will provide for our needs. We give these offerings in hope, knowing you can use them to spread your love in this world. And with these offerings, we give ourselves. May we live with generous hearts and open hands. In our Lord's name we pray. Amen.
Receive now our Lord's blessing. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you before his glorious presence without fault, with great joy, to the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, and power through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Friends, go this day in our Lord's love and peace. Amen.